The latest development update by Airsoft regarding their hotly anticipated Airbus A330 for Microsoft Flight Simulator leaves more questions than answers regarding its release for the sim. Speaking of the sim, the open beta version of Sim Update 13 has officially been released for both PC as well as Xbox, and is completely free for anyone who wishes to try it out. The update brings some fantastic new improvements, changes, and some brand new features, especially to large airliners and aircraft with glass cockpits that are definitely worth a mention. The TFDI design team are also super close to performing their first flight in the upcoming quote-unquote study level MD-11 for the sim. Tons of stuff to check out in today's video, ladies and gentlemen. So sit back, relax, and let's get right into it. What is going on guys, Varun from Flyby Simulations here, and welcome back to yet another video on the channel. Now, right before getting into the meat of things, I must say that these videos take a lot of time and effort to put together, so please consider giving this one a like and subscribing to the channel for more such content. Additionally, if you're looking for the perfect place to have in-depth flight sim or aviation conversations and find a community for yourself, there's no better place than our free Discord server for you. Simply join us by clicking on the link in the description section of the video. And finally, if you wish to go a step further and support the channel financially, do consider joining our Patreon page as well. You'll get access to exclusive content, giveaways, and more. Again, a link to everything is in the description section of the video. Anyways, with that all out of the way, let's get right into the A330. So where's the first proper long haul for Microsoft Flight Simulator in relation to its development? Well, according to Aerosoft, the A330 is currently undergoing internal testing. The team have around 20 testers who are putting the aircraft through its paces. Now, here's where my concern regarding the initially stated summer 2023 release comes in. Though the aircraft is being heavily tested, as of yesterday, the A330 has over 285 reported bugs and improvement requests on Aerosoft's development board. About 30 of these are low priority and therefore at the bottom of the list, an additional 90 have already been fully evaluated, assigned to employees and are ready for processing, 29 others have already been resolved and are awaiting the next release for the test team. The remaining batch requires more detailed evaluation before it can be phased into the production process. Now, I'm an optimist, you guys know this, but if I'm putting my realist glasses on, I'm definitely not as confident about the aircraft's August slash September release as I was before. Now, granted, a lot of these bugs can be resolved quite soon as they're relatively minor, but some can take exceptionally long depending on how severely they impact the aircraft. Continuing on their blog update, the team also highlights this handy graph. The issue categories here give us a good idea of the current status of the aircraft in various departments. Once again, it must be taken into account that none of the figures reflect the complexity of the individual tasks. It is quite conceivable that 9 out of 10 bugs can be solved within a week, but the 10th one takes a whole week in and of itself. According to Aerosoft, their current focus is to sort out the bugs first before continuing to add more features. The team goes on to say that the total number of bugs remaining also gives them a pretty good indication of setting a potential release date. So yeah, there you go guys, that's what we know. It is a little hard to predict exactly when this aircraft will be coming out, but given Airsoft's prior reputation, combined with the fact that the team has still not worked on quote-unquote features yet and are still only powering through the bugs, I must say that I'm not super confident this aircraft will release prior to the end of September. But you know something you won't have to wait till September for? It's the Sim Update 13 beta, which is out for PC and Xbox. The changelog is pretty exhaustive, but we here at Flyby Simulations have become quite the experts at distilling all of it down for you quite concisely. So let's cover some of the most important changes. So this update, as we have mentioned earlier on the channel, has always been positioned by Microsoft and Asobo as being quite major, promising large-scale changes to the avionics and aircraft. Though these have been delivered to a large extent with Sim Update 13, the update goes beyond that too, bringing changes to the overall user interface, backend SDK for developers, as well as better API integration, allowing external clients and applications to seamlessly talk to Microsoft Flight Simulator. 
One of the main features this has enabled is the inclusion of a brand new EFB or electronic flight bag within the Boeing 787 and the Boeing 747-8, where the EFB now can directly connect to SimBrief like other third-party add-ons you might have used. You can directly request things such as payload, wind data, routes, and much more and upload it to your FMC to avoid entering everything manually each time. Now, as can be seen here, the EFB is quite basic in its initial state with only the performance page operational pretty much, but it's a great start and definitely something that Asobo is paving the path towards for the future. The page allows you to calculate takeoff performance using your departure airport, runway, weather data, and more, and directly send it to your FMC for accurate takeoff calculations. On top of this, the very first iteration of a computer and programmed step climb has also been implemented in these big airliners. Keep in mind that this isn't even the dedicated aircraft and avionics update that Asobo pushes out from time to time. This is a sim update. As such, I'm pretty positive that a future AAU will clean all this up even further and add even more functionality than what we have already seen with Sim Update 13. Moving away from the heavies though, aircrafts with glass cockpit and Garmin G3000s and G5000s also saw some pretty substantial improvements. The improved displays can now show wind vectors on the nav maps, nearest local maps, weather maps, and so on to help improve your situational awareness. Speaking of the weather, the ability to adjust the weather gain is now also possible using these very same displays. Now, one thing I was a little disappointed to see was that there was no mention of the World Hub system that I've been massively looking forward to. For those that don't know, this is a concept wherein the community can go and enhance certain default airports in the sim, providing better taxiways, night lighting and such, and for these changes to then be natively implemented in the new official update by Microsoft and Asobo. This way, the community can work with the developers to help improve default regions in the simulator. The first mention of this system came nearly 4-5 to five months ago, but since then we haven't heard anything major, though we know it is being worked on in the back end. So I guess time will tell. Apart from the features and changes already mentioned, there are a plethora of other new additions as well, so I'll leave a link in the description to a full change log for you guys to look at, should you please. Besides, we have TFDI Design's MD-11 news to get to in this video as well, which actually happens to be close to its first flight within Microsoft Flight Simulator. Let's get into it. Now before getting further ahead in the video, I ask for less than 60 seconds of your time to be able to tell you about SimPlace, the largest flight simulation peripheral marketplace in the world. Now, as a flight simmer, finding the right yoke or throttle quadrant or rudder pedals at the right price can be quite overwhelming, but SimPlace offers you a massive catalog of products from trusted developers such as Honeycomb and Thrustmaster to choose from, making your flying experience as realistic as possible. They often have sales and shipping discounts going on as well, so you can often get products for lower prices on SimPlace than you can on other websites. My personal favorite thing about SimPlace though, is that they also have an integrated marketplace where you, yes you, can also sell your flight sim gear or alternatively purchase secondhand items for far cheaper prices. So simply use the link in the description section of the video and use code FLYBY all caps at checkout as seen on screen to earn a further 6% off your entire purchase. That's code FLYBY, all caps, with the link down below the like button to get started with elevating your flight simulation journey. Anyways, back to the video. So then, ladies and gentlemen, the MD-11, it's been quite the journey so far, but the aircraft is now 99.75% complete towards its first flight. Now, how do I know that specific number is accurate? Well, TFDI Design have officially provided us with a full progress page on their website, which highlights the progress of every subsystem within the aircraft in relation to its development. Today actually happens to be the expected date of the first flight the MD-11 will take in the simulator, August 11th, so by the time you're watching this, the team might even be moving on to its next phase of development and release. So what is the next phase then? Well, as much as the first flight sounds cool, it's only step one in six towards version one or final delivery of the product, which we expect to be by the end of this 2023 calendar year, according to the developers. 
the first flight includes a full flight from gate to gate with all major systems functional. We then move on to the internal build phase where this version of the MD-11 will be provided to testers to focus on one system at a time and ensure that each subsystem matches its real-life counterpart. The team will also add advanced systems in this phase. After this point, those of you that pre-purchase the collector's edition of the MD-11 will get access to the aircraft. Moving swiftly along, we move into the early access phase where an even wider audience will gain access to the MD-11 to test it, report bugs, and provide feedback from the team. The penultimate phase is the feature complete phase where the team will wrap up any last minute bugs, and finally the delivery phase is when version 1 of the product will officially come out for everyone to purchase. So clearly a long way to go still but these phases should be wrapped up much faster than development has progressed so far. So provided everything goes well, we're looking to see the official MD-11 released for Microsoft Flight Simulator by the end of the year. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the conclusion of our video today. Some great stuff in relation to Sim Update 13 and the MD-11, whereas some concerns in the A330 department. But that's life, isn't it? can't have the good without the bad. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video guys, please consider giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, and hitting the bell icon to not miss out on future videos. With that said, thanks for watching, and thanks for flying by.